Well, good evening and welcome to Single Malt Saturday. It's been a long time. I can't remember the last time we did a Single Malt Saturday, but it's been a long time. And uh, a number of you have been asking me to do one, and uh, I thought I really should. And I haven't bought myself a good bottle of scotch in a while, so uh, I went out the other day and I bought myself the Crag and Moore 12. I've done a lot of research on this one. I've talked to a lot of people, and uh, it has very high reviews. So uh, quite excited to share it with you this evening. My son and I tried it out the other night, had a wee dram, and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, you probably wonder a lot of times why I don't use a Glen Cairn glass. Uh, like I've got a fistful of them here and I've got more. Every time I go to a whiskey festival, I end up coming home with one. Um, so I use them initially to determine uh, the nose and the palate of the drink. But uh, uh, you know me, I'd rather have my whiskey in a heavy glass. So uh, we have it here. Let's uh, pour ourselves some. So it is the Crag and Moore 12. And uh, Crag and Moore comes from the Speyside area. Uh, the Speyside area has been often said that it's the jewel and the crown of Scottish whiskies. Um, around 47 distilleries in the area at one time. I'm not sure how many there are now. And it said from the top of Ben Rhymes, the mountain, that area, you could see uh, about 40 of them uh, from that uh, location. Uh, some of the great uh, whiskies in that area are uh, Knock and Dew and Aberlauer, um, kind of Farkless, uh, and there's so many more. In the space idea, of course, the Glen Levis and the Glen Fittick and, and so many, the McCollin. So, but in this particular area, uh, the Aberlauer and the, uh, the Glen Farkless and the uh, Nockendoo are really close together with the Crag and Moore. Now, the area that a, that a whiskey is in uh, adds a lot to uh, the way that it tastes. It's like it's home, right? I'll give you an example. Uh, I live inland in Atlantic Canada. I live in the Fredericton area uh, of New Brunswick. So I'm a good distance from the ocean. I love the ocean, and I lived in Prince Edward Island for a number of years. Uh, I can tell you one thing. Uh, when I drive towards uh, uh, St. John, when I get close to the ocean, I can smell it, and I love it. Anybody that's, that's ever, you know what I mean right? That, uh, that sense of the salt air coming in off of, off of the water, it's amazing. Um, the other thing is, is that if you live in that area, you also know that, that when the fog comes in at night sometime and uh, it brings with it a lot of that salt air, that doesn't just, uh, I mean, it lands on stuff, right? And becomes part of the, of the nature of that area, right? Uh, it gets in the water, it gets on the plants, uh, and it does affect the flavor of things. I've often said that uh, uh, one of my favorites, Old Pulton, you can almost, it's so close to the water, you can taste the salt uh, in the single malt. Well, Glen Farkless, uh, a lot of uh, great areas around there, it's close to the water. Also, um, it gets its water, I think it's from the Spey, I'm not sure, but there's a number of streams that come into that area. The water is so fine that they pipe that water into the homes of the people who work at the distillery. That's how good the water is in this. And they claim that's one of the things that really sets this whiskey apart from uh, many of the other whiskeys. Um, also, uh, one of the things they, that they attribute to this is that it has a floral quality. Uh, elegant, subtle. Um, there's so many great comments about this. Uh, but if you've ever stood in a, in a meadow uh, on a hot summer's day, you know, really hot, and there's lots of flowers, and the bees are buzzing around, you know the smell of the nectar in the air and, and the flowers. That goes down into the soil, gets washed into uh, the waters as well. So any area that's got heather and, and that sort of thing, uh, that's going to end up, some of it's going to end up in the flavor of the whiskey. It's also said of this whiskey that there's a slight hint of smoke. I don't get it. I've tried it several times. Uh, just, uh, I don't get any smoke in it at all, but you might. Um, so, what else can I tell you about this whiskey? Oh, uh, the stills are flat top. Most of the stills are uh, the, like the crane neck, uh, the tall stills. Uh, but what happens because of the, top, the fact that this is a flat top, uh, there is a reflux action where the heavy uh, materials go back down into the water and it really gives uh, a distinctive flavor uh, to this. Really a, a mature, just a delicious flavor to the whiskey. Um, also, Michael Jackson, not the singer, Michael Jackson, the publicist and, uh, and writer, uh, created the book, uh, wrote the book, uh, Single Malt, what's it called? Um, I have to think about this for a second. Um, a Guide to Single Malt Scotch. Yeah, 
he is considered the doyen or the, the preeminent person of knowledge uh, in uh, single malt whiskey. And his comment on this was that it had the most complex aroma of any whiskey ever. I mean, that's, that's a pretty high compliment. So what does, uh, what is the aroma like? Remember, I've tried them out in the Glen Cairn glass. Um, it's definitely floral. It's definitely, yeah, it's subtle and sweet. Um, and the flavor? You will never find a smoother whiskey than this. I mean, I've had uh, the Highland Park 25. I couldn't, bu couldn't buy it now because it's too expensive. But I've had the Highland Park 25, and um, I can tell you, that's a smooth whiskey, but this is just as smooth. Uh, it is elegant. It is subtle. I can't find any hint of smoke to it at all. It's sweet. It is just a delicious single malt. Uh, if you're getting into uh, single malts for the first time, I'm often asked the question, what if I was getting into single malts for the first time? Buy this, really. Uh, you probably will never buy yourself a better bottle of scotch than this. You might not want to buy a different one ever. <laughs> it is one of the best. Now, of course, at times you're going to want a little warmer. I'm going to shut the stove down a little bit. Um, from time to time, you're going to want a whiskey that, as, you, as you're going along, you might want something with a bit of smoke. And, um, yeah, so there's a number of great whiskeys out there. The Lafroigs and Lagavulin and 16, one of my favorites. But if you just want a good, delicious um, single malt that doesn't get in your face, it's just a pleasure to drink, then certainly uh, the Craig and Moore 12, I think, is one of the best whiskeys you'll ever get. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you about it, uh, except for the fact that uh, uh, I almost think it's underpriced. It is now uh, $104. For the longest time, it was around $89, but you know, everything's been going up. But at $104, I can tell you, there's whiskeys out there right now that don't even have an age statement on them, which means that they can be as little as three years old, and they're selling for $89. <laughs> it's just, it's insane how things are going up, isn't it? Um, but this at $104, $103, $104, uh, I tell you, buy one of these and put it on your top shelf, and you'll probably always want to have one. So, sorry we haven't been getting together more often, but... Uh, I just want to thank you for uh, encouraging me to do this. You got me to get a good bottle. And I hope wherever you are this evening that you're surrounded by family and friends and that you have a chance to have a, a wee dram of whiskey. Slange of my friends. Cheers.